As we begin a survey of the history of life, we will start with the creation week. This is a six-day period of time, about 6,000 years ago, when God created the physical creation as we know it. It is by a series of acts of what we call special creation, by the Word of God, they just came to be. And these pro that process of origin, the coming to be by the Word of God, is unlike anything that happens today anywhere in the universe, or has happened that way for the last 6,000 years. Keep in mind that what he's, when he's doing this, as we go through this, he is himself keeping in mind the idea that humans are going to be inhabiting this. So he's creating it with the idea that humans could exist in this, and he's doing it so that humans could exist. So the necessary anthropic principle characteristics of the universe are set in place with each of these creative events. Also, he kept in mind the whole time that he wants humans to understand him through those things that are made. He wants humans to understand the structure of this universe, so he has made the universe in such a way that humans could understand it. That puts in what we call the unnecessary uh, for life anthropic principle characteristics. At the same time, while he's doing all of that, he's also creating physical illustrations of his invisible nature. That's being thrown in the whole time. In addition to that, since he wants us to see not just his nature, but the infinitude of his nature, the, uh, the, the unlimited aspects of his attributes, he also places spectra of perfection into those things that are made. And you keep that in mind all along the way. These things are occurring with each of the creative events. We begin with day one. God creates the universe, and he creates the universe for life and for human life. So it's got the anthropic principle characteristics of the plus, 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 minus topology. It's got the laws, the constants that we talked about there, the necessary anthropic principle characteristics of the universe. God also creates matter, the matter that's going to be uh, put into the form of the objects of the universe, including life itself. So the subatomic particles with the anthropic principle characteristics that we spoke of, atoms, molecules, the special atoms and the special molecules that we were discussed in an early chapter that had to be in place for life. Also, God clothes himself in light. We infer this from looking at uh, Psalm 104, looking also uh, back and forth between Genesis and Psalm 104. It seems that God, uh, he hasn't created the sun yet. That's not going to be until day four. He apparently clothes himself in light. He creates light to be a light source for the earth. And it's going to be a light source for three days until he creates the sun. Somewhere in this period between or on either day one or day two, God creates the solid earth. The first time the earth is described, it's described as being covered with water. Uh, so when the solid earth is formed underneath it is not entirely clear, either day one or day two. And it's at that time that God defines the anthropic principle characteristics of the earth, such as the size, the composition of the earth itself, the magnetic field of the earth. These would be put in place in this period of time. He's also creating at the same time the oceans, uh, the, the uh, area where he's later going to put the sea creatures. And that's going to require a certain chemistry, again, anthropic principle characteristics of chemistry, the biomatrix that will have to be in place before animals can live in the ocean. He's probably creating that on this day one or two uh, period of time. When day two comes about, he creates a, a firmament in the midst of the waters. He separates the waters above from the waters below. It appears that that is the creation of not just the atmosphere, but in fact, all of space. And so he's creating the anthropic principle characteristics of three-dimensional space. He's creating the atmospheric composition of nitrogen, carbon dioxide, and oxygen, ozone, the water cycle, all of these things that we've discussed in an earlier, uh, earlier chapters. On day three, God raises the continents. Now, all it says is that God said, let the waters 
uh, be, be gathered together and let the dry land appear. Several possibilities exist on what that means about how he created the continents. But we believe that there's evidence that God raised the continents, allowing the water to run off the continents, producing sediments there at the edge of the continents that we know of, that we've, we discover in the present, that suggests that that's how he brought the continents into being. The arrangement of the continents was very much different than the arrangement of the continents in the present. It's probably uh, the arrangement of continents that has been described as Rodinia. There's a possibility as well that there's yet another continent that is not in existence today that was in fact destroyed during the flood. Come back to that briefly in a future, uh, future session. The, uh, at the same time, as he raises the, the uh, continents out of the oceans, he then prepares the dry land for the animals. In fact, he dries the land and he prepares it for the animals that will be placed there uh, three days later. But those animals require a biomatrix, so it's probably on this day, day three, that he inserts the biomatrix, he creates the biomatrix for land animals. Uh, the, again, the arrangement of the continents, our guess this per, at this particular point in time is that the continents are arranged in, in a U-shaped pattern. That's roughly what it, it looks like. Uh, but the pieces are quite different in arrangement than they are today. Siberia, Laurentia, that's North America. Amazonia, that's uh, Central South America, next to Africa. India is next to Antarctica, which is next to uh, Southern Africa, and so on. There's a different arrangement of continents that seems to be in place at this time. Uh, and he uh, also, it seems that there's evidence that he created around the rim of this, uh, this continent a, uh, a reef, a reef of actually what we call stromatolites, a reef made of microorganisms, not a reef made of uh, corals and this sort of thing, but actually a reef of bacteria. Uh, the first three days, days one, two, and three of the creation seem to be designed to fulfill one of the comments in Genesis 1-2. It says in Genesis 1-2, the earth was without form and void. It was formless when originally created. It was without life. It was unfilled when originally created. The first three days seem to give it the form. And the next three days seem to fill it with organisms that characterize the earth in the present. And so on the second part of day three, God creates the plants. Now, once he's created the plants, we're into the, what, what clearly are the things we, we studied in the course. We're going to need the biomatrix in place so that plants can exist. The plants are going to be in a netted hierarchy of species to illustrate the uh, hierarchical character of God. Plants are going to be created with high diversity to show the uh, multi uh, multiple nature of the Godhead. They're going to be created with great disparity to, to show the same sort of thing. They're going to have hidden designs in them for minimizing the evil following the fall that's going to occur in the future. But they're hidden because they're not needed in this perfect world before the fall. They're going to be created with hidden designs that are going to be useful in refilling the earth after the flood. And uh, also, they're going to be filled with hidden designs that are going to be for our use, for human use, even thousands and thousands of years into the future. And, and plants are going to be created with a specter of perfection of beauty, discontinuity, mutualism, biological systems, all these things that we've spoken about in the, in the course, and with no natural biological evil. All of that is done in the moment God spoke the plants into being. The plants, as they, as they looked on the original earth, probably a very different looking earth than the present. Uh, we suspect that the land uh, portion of the continents that we now have uh, supported a gymnospermous flora, a kind of like the, similar to the coniferous uh, uh, forest that is in the cold regions of the earth at present. 
there's reason to believe also that there's a floating island of trees and vegetation out in the, in the oceans, perhaps something even as large as a large continent in this pre-flood world. Now there's a, some plants that aren't represented here that we haven't been able to place into the pre-flood world. Uh, these would be the angiosperms, the flowering plants. There is a possibility that there's another continent that actually supported the angiosperms, the flowering plants, that has apparently been destroyed in the course of the flood. That's my suspicion. I don't know for sure. Uh, that might change next week. Uh, we'll have to see on that. In the, um, the next day of the creation uh, is day four of the creation week. I guess I have one more comment to make about day three. It appears from what we see in Genesis chapter two that he leaves one place on the land empty of plants and animals, and that's the place where he's going to create Eden to come. We move to day four. God creates the sun, the moon, and the stars. They're created for light, uh, and they're created for life. We have the anthropic principle characteristics of the sun, how stable it's got to be, the position of the sun with respect to the earth, the size of the moon and what it does for the earth, the position of the earth and the galaxy. All of these sorts of things are set in place in the creation of the sun, the moon, and the stars. On day five, God creates the water animals and the air animals. And very much like the situation with the plants, we've got to create a biomatrix inside those animals so that those animals can thrive on the land. There's a netted hierarchy of species. There's high diversity, disparity, hidden designs like we had in the plants, uh, anticipating the use of these animals by humans a spectrum of perfection of beauty, discontinuity, mutualism, systems, personhood, all without biological evil, and again, apparently leaving Eden empty. The animals that were created in various places, it appears that on the land portion of the continents we now have, you have the creation of the flying reptiles like the pteranodons, you have the uh, creation uh, near the uh, hot spring reefs of fascinating organisms that now are extinct, found in the fossil record uh, that were apparently destroyed in the flood and never recovered. We have a number of shallow marine organisms evidenced in the fossil record that apparently occupied much of this uh, continent before the flood. We have special organisms created for the floating forest such as uh, animals uh, on the main portion of the floating forest and other animals that lived on the edge that uh, were made in such a way that they wouldn't fall through the, the thin, uh, 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 thin base of the forest itself. They could swim in the water, run around on that floating structure without falling through, sort of halfway in between uh, an amphibian and a fish what you might call an ampfish. Uh, the ampfish were created around that floating forest. And then we've got the mammals. We don't know where the mammals uh, existed on this pre-flood, uh, pre uh, pre-fall earth. We think maybe, possibly, that they were on yet another continent that has been destroyed. Uh, then on day, uh, day five, uh, day six of the creation week, God creates the land animals. Again, it's got the same characteristics of life that we saw with the plants and the sea creatures and so on. Uh, it, it appears that he would have created the dinosaurs and associated fauna on, on this continent, labyrinthodon amphibians on the floating forest, and mammals probably on another continent that is now, now destroyed. It's now on this sixth day that God takes that area of the world where he didn't create plants and didn't create animals, what's going to be Eden, and he takes dirt from that area and forms Adam from that dirt. With that creation, there's going to be a biomatrix 
uh, associated with humans that is created at the same time. God puts into him, breathes into Adam the breath of life, and man becomes a living, uh, a living soul. Uh, he's created initially without any natural evil, as the other organisms were. He's created in the image of God, so that he can worship God and rule over the creation. He's made king and priest of the creation. God then plants the Garden of Eden. So this area that had been without plants before, it's now filled with plants again. It's going to be plants with that biomatrix, with all the characteristics uh, that we, we saw associated with plants, uh, spectra of perfection showing the nature of God, uh, no, uh, no natural evil. That is now filling the Garden of Eden. In fact, what it says is he fills the garden with all manner of, of trees that are pleasant to look upon and all manner of fruit that is good to eat. Then he takes Adam and brings the animals to Adam, the animals and the birds of the garden, brings them to Adam to see what he would name them. And man begins his priestly responsibilities of, of uh, naming and uh, uh, priestly and kingly responsibilities of naming, classifying, taking care of the animals of the world. God then creates Eve thus initiating marriage, introducing marriage into, uh, into the world, marriage as a picture of the very nature of God himself. And then we're told at the end of this that God terminates his creation. He ends his creation uh, processes, beginning a day of rest. Uh, all of this, days one through six, he does all of his work in six days, not because he can't do it all in one, but because he wants us as humans to work for six days and rest a seventh day. God rests, terminates, takes a time to rest from his creation, not because he has to, but as an example to us. This then is a summary of the creation week. It is again events, a series of events that never again Will, ex will occur on the history of the earth. They terminate at the end of the sixth day of creation. And we, so when we infer the nature of what's going on in the creation week, we cannot take what we learn about the present and uh, learn completely all that there is to know, maybe not even very much, of what there is to know about what happened during the creation week in earth history.